Alright, now before we talk about how to change these lines, let's talk about why they're blue. Okay, so let's go back to the assemble here and look at it. And these pieces here on the well, they're supposed to be having a part as well, right? These guys. And that those green guys, they're supposed to be body like these. And how come that when we really do that connect adjacent pieces, when this piece here connect to any piece on the body, which are essentially what that those blue line is. So these pieces here, those darker and grayer green color, those element, when they are connected, when that line being created um, by these connected adjacent pieces, right? When that line is there, right? Um, and when we do this um, um, attribute copy, right? How does it decide, like, for this line, this line, how does it decide? Is it a body or is it a well, right? How does it decide? Because this line, if you really look close, this line has two ends. This end is the body, sorry, the, the well, and the other end is the body. Now, how does this guy decide which one it is when it becomes a line? Right. Um, let's just go back to the assemble here again. Assemble basically is a bunch of points. And uh, you can change that display as to point cloud. As you can see, they're just, uh, uh, I think it's this guy here. Yeah, this is a bunch of points. Um, so every point here, actually every, every primitive, but it's basically primitive and point the same thing. As you can see, point and primitive, they have the same amount. Anyway, uh, so basically, um, the body attribute on the primitive are accurate here. But when we were trying to copy using this attribute copy, what we already define is convert from point to point. Um, but here, as you can see, it's not converting from point to point. It's converting or transferring from uh, point to primitive here. right? And when that happens, when that happens, when the copy happens, for, for example, this line, the information was coming from this guy, and this guy's body guy, and the wheel guy, and it, it has to be transferred to this line, then you will compare and see which one to go for. And the default setting will go for the letter um, that is bigger. And by bigger, I mean uh, alphabet alphabetically B hand, or you know, B is bigger than A, and so on. So while, which is beginning with W is bigger than B. W is bigger than B because W is after B in the alphabetical uh, you know, sequence, right? So that's why the, the, it actually choose to use while here instead of body. Now I don't want it to be either while or body. I want to, them to be something else. So first of all, what I want to say is I want to actually have those attributes on the point because points are accurate. Let's say um, because of that requirement, I'm going to promote this attribute called uh, part from primitive, which is here on assemble, right? It's on the primitive attribute as part. I'm going to promote it back two points. Okay, as I have described before, uh, after assemble, everything is basically a point, a point, and because everything is a point, every piece is a point, and they are all falling into a group without any problem, so that what's happening here on this attribute promote should be still accurate. So if it's body, it's body. If it's well, it's well. Right. And now it lives on the point, as you can see here now on the point part right here. Then I'm going to say this attribute copy now will go use this point attribute copy. Uh, copy. Uh, oops. <laughs> so the copy from, let me delete that. So I'm going to copy from this attribute promoted result 
and which means that the attribute part is now on the point. As you can see now, on the point, we do have the part now. And that part should be accurate. Let's actually check that. Let's do this line here. This line is selected here, right? Let me actually delete it. And that's going to give me a dissolve. I'm going to shake it off, shake it off, and drag it to the attribute to connect it. And here I'm going to say delete non selected. That's, that's basically uh, allows me to temporarily isolate this line. As you can see now, it has two points. One belongs to body, which is this, this point, and the other guy belongs to the well. Cool. So that's one step. Now I have at least accurate information about, you know, what this line is connected from and connected to. Okay. All right. Now of course, because of that, the attribute is not on the points. It's not on the primitive anymore. As you can see, it's not there anymore. Then my attribute wrangle simply just don't do anything anymore. Right. Now that's not cool. So I'm gonna say. Let's promote it back. Promote it. Uh, promote this part back from point to primitive again, and let's take a look. As you can see, it's working again. Now let me actually actually show you that what that promote does, because again, that's the same question you want to ask, right? When you promote attribute, this this uh, let's go back here. This part attribute. For that particular land, for example, this land. Let me delete it again, so we can just talk about it one more time. So this land here, I'm gonna promote its attribute, the part attribute, from point level to the primitive level. Let's see what happens, right? So attribute promote, and basically I'm doing the same thing, but I'm isolating a land, so we can actually see what's happening. So I'm gonna promote the part from point to primitive. So now they're gone, and back to here, you can see it becomes well, right? And the promotion method is average. Now let's change that to minimum. You can see changes to body. If I change that to maximum, it becomes well. So default setting is more or less maximum. If you want to change it to minimum, you can. It just changes from well to body. The reason for that is because when we're promoting, it's going to check what's your part value and what's your part value. And apparently, this, those two points are having two different part values, right? As you can see before, one is body, another one is well. When you're prom promoting it, it's going to say which one to go, right? Which one do we really inherit? And that's what this promote method uh, uh, is going to in charge of. Okay, so with that being explained, those are just for explanation purposes. Let me just keep them there, but maybe I, I bypass these guys and go back to here the attribute promote. So that's why here in the default setting I'm getting well because W is bigger than B. And if I wanted to, I can change that to minimum and take a look at it again. Now you can see it becomes body as you can see the color changes. Okay. All right. So to me, I don't really want them to be either body or the well. I want them to be to be the glue, or even something else, right? So how can I even do that? Well, here in the attribute promote, after promoting it, uh, the at the part attribute uh, changes from point to you know to the primitive. If you go back to the point, the part attribute disappears. But you can still keep it by uncheck this delete original. Now I have the part back here. So now I do know for every in every each line here, I do know which which part which part is connected from and which part is connected to. And based on that, I can do some if statement to filter out where these lines are or what they are. Okay. So now bo both my points and my geometry, sorry, my primitive are having this group, uh, sorry, this part attribute, right? They're all 
having this part attribute. So what I want to do is I want to say, okay, if this guy on the point level, this line here, it has one of the point that is having a will part attribute, and another point is anything else, then that means that's the connection from the will element to other parts. It could be the body or other things, I don't really care, but if it's a will connected not to another will part, but to other part of the car, then I simply will make that primitive to be something not a will constraint. And the, will, the constraint name will not be will anymore. Okay? So because I have those set up already, I don't really want to disturb or change anything over there. I'm going to just, after I have done all these things, I'm going to really filter in all these guys and give them a different constraint name. So I, then I need to know, again, I have showed you this before, I need to know the two points. Let me do uh, int point number one be equals to vertex point, right? I'm going to say the first input, which is zero, and I need a point number, uh, sorry, a vertex number, and I need to query that by using primitive uh, vertex. Okay, this primitive vertex will then will also ask uh, which input I'm querying, which is the first input, and the primitive number will be the primitive number I can query here. Because I'm working on the primitive level, I can directly say add primitive number and zero. Here, that zero is uh, the first <coughs> first vertex. A primitive will have two vertex because the line is connecting two vertices. Uh, I should say that. All right, let me run it. Make sure that I'm not getting any errors. I'm going to create uh, yet another line exactly like this, but I'm going to change this one to 1, which is the second point of that primitive line. I'm going to say this is also primitive number 2 now. So now I have the point number 1 and point number 2 of this iteration in this iteration, right? Again, this is iterating through all the lines. And in this particular iteration, I have this point number 1 and point number 2, which is the point number of uh, one of the points and another point. If that's the line, or here, if this is the line. And we now know this one of the points number is this guy. Another point number is this guy. I don't know which one is which, but I know those two point number now. All right. Then after these two, these two, after these two I'm going to say, all right, with the point number, I can ask anything about this point. I'm going to ask the part attribute. It's a string attribute. So I'm going to say string part one, point one part or anything like that. Just I need to know the part attribute of the first point. So I'm going to ask point first input point number. Actually, uh, attribute first. So attribute will be the part, and point number will be point number one. String part two equals point, and let's say first input, also part attribute, and let's say point number two. So now I basically know for this line, the two part attribute of those two points on that line. And then I can do a comparison. Let's first say if those two are the same, right? So if part one and part two are the same, if they are the same, actually I'm going to say if they're not the same. If they're not the same, then that means what that means. What does that mean? That means that this line is connecting two different parts. It's either connecting from body to well, or from body to glue, or windshield in this case, or from well to windshield. Who knows? I don't know, but I'm sure that it's a connection between two different parts. And then I'm going to say if this connection has one, at least one of the part is the well part. If it is, that must mean this primitive is one of these lines here. 
and only these lines. So I'm gonna do another if, embedded if. You can do two embedded ifs. More than two would be too complicated, so I'm not encouraging you to do that, but two, like two layers of if is generally okay. I'm gonna say, all right, if also part one is mm, well. Let's see if that's a well here. Whoops. Let me finish that syntax. So if part one is well, let's see, yeah, well here. And or, so either one, if they're well, they're not supposed to be the same because I have a if here already checking if they're the same. So that means they're not the same, but one of them is well. That's basically what I'm saying with those two if. Um, that means it's yeah, uh, they are. This line is a connection between well to something else that is not a component of the well. Mm, so let's say this guy will be uh, well. So if not both, but one of them is well. That's basically what those two if says because they are not the same, but one of those is well. Then I'm gonna give it a color. Let's say a uh, CD will be equals to let's say purple this time one comma one and seven column. Okay, and let's do that. You can immediately see that those guys turns purple because these are the only guys that fulfills this requirement. The first point part attribute and the second point part attribute are not the same. That's one layer of filtering which gives me only the lines that are connecting two different pieces. That's this part. Another if is checking if any of those two points are having well as their part attribute. If they are, then this basically means uh, that's one of the lines connecting from well to another different part. And that's basically what are those, what those are, right? So now I can say as at constraint uh, name will be equals to well other. Okay, now I basically have one more constraint name here now. It's well other. Okay. So now I'm back in the uh, car simulation, I have glue, I have hard, I have glue well, I just need to have another glue constraint relationship. I'm going to call this guy glue well other. And also the, the data name will be well other. Okay. Now I can differentiate the glue between well and the glue from well to others, as you can see here in the car. And the blue ones here are the connections between those well components. And the purple ones are how they're connected to other part of the body. I basically now have four different glues. One, this blue one is for the well and inside of the well. The purple one is how well connected or glued to other parts green one for hard and then the white one for the rest of the body. As you can see we can, we can get complicated uh, gradually and they're all procedural because they're all coded this way so even I use a different car if I do the same kind of like s grouping and naming in Maya and put it here it will work. Alright that's the power of procedural. I don't really want to select these lines if I, I can actually without I can actually don't go through this trouble, I can just grab these lines and give them a group and when I'm doing the attribute wrangle I'm just gonna tell it which group to operate on here. I, I can do that but it's just uh, not clean uh, or not procedurally not destructive. Anyway, so now let me just do one more thing before I wrap up this tutorial. I'm gonna say okay inside of our car simulation we have four glue now for constraint relationship and they're all having its strengths 
and going through all these guys and change them one by one could be really tedious. So let me go ahead and change these guys all back to one. Now this guy doesn't have a string. Uh, this guy one, and this guy oops. Go back to the output, and this guy I'm also going to change it back to one. So they're all one now. I'm not going to define them right here because I have to click on here and change, click here and change. I'm just leave them as one. And I'm actually going to define that again in the constraint network. Because this is a attribute, if you hover your cursor here, it's an attribute called strings. And if I create that strings in the constraint network, it should be able to be read by the simulation. So I'm going to say, back in my attribute wrangle, let me make it bigger. Doesn't really get bigger. Anyway, I'm going to say, all right, I need another attribute. It's a float attribute called strings. As equals to channel, I'm going to say body glue strings. OK, let me copy that and put it into the well. Let's say this is well glue strings. All right, and one more here. Let's say other glue strings. And eventually here, one more channel. I'm going to say this is going to be well other uh, glue strings. All right. Now I click this button to add all those four attributes. And basically, I can now use this for to determine the strengths. So body glue, let me use 50. Well glue strings, really strong, much, that much maybe. Other glue strings, uh, body glue strings actually doesn't matter because that's a hard constraint. Uh, other glue strings will be the actually the glass and stuff, the white ones. I'm going to say 50 here. Um, and well, other glue strand may be zero, so really weak. All right, let's see if this works. Let's go back to the simulation here, and let's run the simulation, and let's see if the well will get out from the car, but not really break itself, right? Now you can see the well are holding together, while others like the glass and stuff, they're also having their own kind of like glue strings. So basically this is working. And I can now go define these things or fine tune these things inside of that my, uh, oops, uh, inside of my attribute wrangle right here. As you can see, it can get really, really powerful. Okay, anyway. So that's going to be it for this tutorial. We have done actually a lot of new stuff. We're having now four glues. Uh, you can keep doing more and more if you wanted to. But for now, I just want to show you that it's possible. And uh, you can get complicated real quick. And that's why Houdini is so uh, flexible and powerful and also non-destructive. So we're going to move on to the next tutorial. We're going to go ahead and do some fine tuning, import the model back. And we're going to say if there are anything else, we can enhance our simulation. OK, so see you next time.